Good morning. I appreciate the opportunity to visit with you this morning and uh, feel privileged to uh, start out this program knowing that there are some really strong presentations that are going to be made through the course of the day and uh, welcome you here on behalf of the Citrus Research and Development Foundation. Um, so I'll give a brief overview this morning on um, the programs that we're sponsoring on behalf of the industry, but I wanted to start by just recognizing that this uh, journey we're on with HLB and other diseases in Florida is really a joint effort, and often we forget to recognize all the players that are involved. So uh, first, thanks to all of you as the growers um, whose initiative brought together the resources and the planning to make uh, HLB research in Florida the leaders in the world. And uh, I think if, if research is the solution to HLB, you've got the process in place that will lead to that uh, solution and success. Allied partners from the processing industry and other aspects that support the growers of Florida Citrus are important as well, as are the associations that represent you, the growers, and the other aspects as well. Uh, we at the CRDF work with these groups a lot in trying to communicate what we're doing, getting ideas from the field, and also uh, gathering the resources to uh, keep these programs moving forward. Uh, often overlooked, I think, is the fact that without the strong group of scientists that are present in Florida and those that have been recruited from outside of Florida, the work that you're going to hear today represents a very large effort on HLB, uh, and some of it is building on decades of research that's already been done on citrus by the folks at the University of Florida and USDA ARS throughout the state. And uh, without their work, we wouldn't have an opportunity to be uh, working towards solutions that you're going to hear uh, updates on today. And this meeting, I think, is indicative of the, the uh, opportunity that the extension uh, personnel provide to get that communication out. And I'll give an example later to, uh, in my talk about how the organization of the citrus agents can help translate what you're seeing in the field with the research that's going on. So I wanted to uh, acknowledge the great support that the extension group provides to getting that information out both directions. And then finally, sponsors that bring the funding together that make this work possible. Um, I, I often try to remind people what our goals are for the, the foundation and for the research effort on Citrus HLB. And uh, there are a lot of ways to look at it. There are 28 priorities. There are 12 categories of research and so on. But there, there really are three major goals that we have. And, and a lot of the work that you're going to hear today focuses on these. Uh, pervert, preserving the capacity of the citrus inventory that's out there today much of which is infected with HLB, much of which is starting to show advanced symptoms of the disease. And so a lot of the work that we're doing is focused on what can we do to preserve that inventory. And along with that, preserving the, the quality of the fruit, uh, try to keep the fruit on the trees. And I think this year uh, we've seen for the first time a pretty major impact of the disease on uh, loss of the crop through fruit drop. Uh, and then the third area is building the tools to enable you to replant, to replace that inventory, because without replanting, without the new crop coming along, obviously the production over time is going to be pretty limited. And I'd add a fourth thing here that's it's really not separate from these, but the longer term research is to try to find some uh, durable, uh, uh, cost-effective and long-term solutions by way of plant breeding uh, to provide uh, resistant plants for HLB and some of the other diseases. So that, that's really, I think, a, a way to encapsulate all the work that's being done right now in HLB. So I'm going to give a brief update on the research portfolio that we're supporting and talk a little bit about some of the projects that we have working on the specifics of delivery of these these uh, results to the industry. Uh, first, a graphic of the uh, sort of a, a, a commitment of investment to HLB research, and this represents the total investment since 2008. And you can see that over 95% of it is focused on HLB research. And I know the, the print is small, but the point is that the, 
the primary focus of the Florida Citrus research effort is specifically focused on HLB. There's a smaller piece of the pie, oops, sorry, up here that's focused on citrus canker, and we have smaller commitments to some of the other diseases like citrus black spot. There's still some effort underway looking at uh, interaction of some of the other diseases and pests with the system now that it's uh, impaired by HLB. So we have projects on diaprepes and um, some other things as well. So just to give you an idea of the commitment that you've made to HLB research here. Wanted to highlight some of the, the opportunities that have, have come along recently to enhance what we're doing in research. And probably the first one to notice is that in early February, uh, Florida sponsored the third international HLB research conference in Orlando and uh, was the largest yet, bringing scientists from around the world to uh, present and discuss their results, share their results, and in a collaborative way, uh, learn from one another what's going on. And, and as more countries in the world that have citrus are becoming infected with HLB, obviously the community of scientists that are working on it grows. So it was a, a great three-day three day opportunity in early February for those scientists to uh, participate in, in sharing their information and updating each other on the work. Uh, those of you that attended that meeting probably felt as I did that the science is running away from you. Very technical, but when you uh, bring scientists together and you want them to go away with new understanding of the disease and what they can do to help, that's what you need. So it really was a scientist to scientist meeting. And, for that reason, uh, the organizers from UF and USDA organized a follow-up grower meeting in March, and I think many of you may have been to, to the CREC at Lake Alfred on March 6th to hear some of the output of that, that uh, meeting and also a, a brief interaction between the audience and some of the scientists that are involved in this research. Uh, those are the kind of interactions that can keep you updated and again, meetings like today will do the same. And, and often I'm asked, what are the highlights of the research? And I refer people to these kind of meetings because that's where you can learn from the people that are actually doing the work. So just uh, encourage you in that. Uh, <clears throat> within CRDF, we currently have about 110 projects that are funded with primarily citrus grower money, with money from the state and federal government, uh, donations from, from uh, various aspects of the industry. And collectively, it's about a, a $15 million investment this year. Uh, each year, we run a new system of, of seeking proposals to fill in the gaps, to build on the research that's being completed. And this year, we had over 100 pre-proposals that were narrowed to 63 uh, full proposals. And through the fairly involved process of uh, reviewing and uh, discussing these proposals. Ultimately, 33 projects were approved. And I think I see Bobby Barbin out here in the audience. Uh, Bobby is the chair of the Research Management Committee that is doing a tremendous job for the industry in helping coordinate the growers who look at these proposals and determine whether or not uh, they really will help bring solutions to the industry. And there are several others here in the audience that are on that committee, Bill Barber and others that are here. And um, they're, they're doing a lot of, of great work for you on your behalf. They're communicating the needs as well as helping identify the best kind of research that's going to help move this program along. I mentioned collaboration. Uh, the HLB conference allowed growers to get together uh, in, in here on the grower day, but also the scientists to collaborate. And as we move forward with, with HLB research through the foundation, our goal is to bring these teams closer and closer together so that they're working in, in concert rather than competitively. And I think you'll hear as we move on today, there are, there are a lot of examples where collaboration is moving the process forward. So we have now, uh, with, with our new uh, group of 33 proposals that have now been approved uh, and on July 1, which begins our new year, we'll have about 115 projects, uh, mostly, again, over 90 percent focused on HLB. And many of these projects have been narrowed down based on 
other results that have, have come forward. So we're continuing to build on the learning that's happening here in Florida and elsewhere. I want to spend a little bit of time on that which you're most interested in, and that is what, what are you doing for us now? What can we uh, expect in the short term? How do we get these results from all this research? And I would just remind you that when HLB was first detected in Florida, one could say we knew almost nothing about it. Uh, and the collective we is worldwide, there was very little known about it. So it's been an unusual challenge to to have to understand the disease in all its aspects and at the same time develop solutions. But along the way, the CRDF in its uh, early development realized that, that it wasn't just doing the research but getting the results out to the industry that was important. So we have a committee called the Commercial Product Development Committee, which uh, takes the research results at the time the scientists are kind of finished with their studies and asks the question, what do we do with these now? And so we've, we've had this committee in place for several years, and in the last 18 months, it's become very active. We have eight projects that are the focus of this committee, and among them are a couple that I've listed here, the first being uh, looking at the use of neonicotinoid soil insecticides, particularly for young tree health, trying to support that idea of being able to, to uh, replant citrus and protect it from psyllids through the first few years of its life. And there's been a lot of activity uh, translating that research, uh, directing the research to try to bring uh, neonicotinoids and other insecticides together to, to provide you the best psyllid program you can. And I think you'll hear several reports on that today. Another important project that we're working on is a focus on antimicrobial materials. Uh, to try to provide treatments, uh, therapy to trees that are infected with HLB to perhaps reduce the, the titer of bacteria and to lower the disease incidence and, and therefore the injury to the trees. It's one of the few areas of research that offers the opportunity to reverse the disease in the trees. And so we're, we're moving through a multi-year process. We've had a large number of candidate materials that have been tested. We've narrowed that list down. We're now in some advanced testing and also starting to talk to commercial partners so that when a good antimicrobial material comes out of this advanced screening, we'll already have the partners to move it through whatever steps are necessary to deliver it to you as a product. Uh, concurrently, we're looking at what's the best way to deliver a product like this, whether it's uh, could it be sprayed topically? Would it need to be injected? Could it be applied as a trunk treatment and so on? So that, that development work is also proceeding as the products are being evaluated. And so we're, we're optimistic that in the shorter term we're going to have progress in, in finding an antimicrobial material that when applied to the tree could reduce the disease. Just a side note, this would, this would really solve the problem that, that we see a lot of people are using micronutrients and enhanced nutritional programs to try to retain the health of trees uh, that are infected with, with HLB. And, and I think it's fairly well known now that those treatments do nothing to reduce the bacterial presence in the plant. So combined with these antimicrobial materials, if you could reduce the, the uh, titer of disease organisms in the plant, perhaps um, the productivity and the health of those trees would be restored. So that's a real important project, and we're emphasizing that very strongly. Uh, just last week, we had a board meeting uh, following a commercial product development committee meeting. And in hearing back from the industry about many things that have come forward this, this current year, we approved several new projects, and I'll just highlight those. The first one is, and you'll hear about this in, in more detail from the scientists, but there's, there's uh, growing evidence that perhaps some of the rootstocks that are in the UF and the USDA rootstock trials around the state are showing some tolerance to HLB. And there are certain uh, genetic backgrounds that are conferring what appears to be that tolerance. And so the industry has seen field days, have heard repeatedly from these scientists. And it, it's uh, repeatedly asked of us, what can we do to move that along? So we're working with the breeding programs, and we're working through the commercial product development group to try to design a plan to bring larger scale plantings of these uh, promising rootstocks out to the growers in several places in the state 
so that we can look at those and see, not in small plot trials, but in larger plots where you can see the, the effect of pressure from HLB on these plants under more commercial scale opportunities. And our goal is to get that plan in place and get trees ordered so that we'll have those plantings going in sooner rather than later. Uh, the second project listed here focuses on uh, an area of our, our research portfolio that we emphasized in the call for proposals this year, and that is responding to uh, tree health and what could be done uh, to interact with, with what we know to be happening in the plant. And the focus, particularly on plant growth regulators, has come forward as we've seen more and more fruit drop. So we have some research programs that are funded to look at the role of plant growth regulators in restoring phloem health to try to encourage the trees to grow additional phloem in the presence of disease. And, and there are some examples from other crop systems where this has been effective. And so we funded some research in that area. And we've also uh, asked the scientists to add a dimension to that program to also look at the effect of these plant growth regulators potentially on fruit drop and minimizing the propensity of these trees to drop their fruit. So that pro project is just getting underway and there'll be some field trials um, this season to go along with a lot of work that growers themselves are doing to evaluate uh, treatments against this fruit drop. The other thing that we've, we've committed to doing is reviewing all the labels for plant growth regulators that are available for citrus and perhaps those that are available on other crops that might be made available for citrus to understand currently how those products can be used and what, mo what modifications to those labels might be necessary to allow their use for this particular purpose. The third project I'm gonna mention, it's really not on the screen here uh, other than just by title, the HLB escapes. Uh, as the disease continues to affect plantings in the state, uh, increased observations are being made that there are trees that look very healthy compared to their neighboring trees within a block. And if you go around the state and talk to growers, you hear anecdotal observations that here's a tree, here's a part of a tree. I actually heard a couple of those this morning outside. Um, we want to make sure that, that we look at those uh, trees to determine whether there's something there that's conferring resistance or tolerance, whether it's a genetic trait in the tree, the scion or the rootstock, or there's something in the soil environment, or perhaps there's something in the treatments that have been applied to that block that would allow those trees to be surviving at a, a, and healthier than those around them. And we've had a, prog a project in place uh, for several years, and in fact, several projects looking at are there examples of that in China, in India, where the disease has been for generations? Uh, are there groves that have survived and, and we wanna know what, what's allowing them to survive? But now we're focusing more on Florida and Dr. Fred Gemitter at Lake Alfred is the lead on this project to understand what's going on with these escapes. Um, this past week we talked with the Commercial Product Development Committee and identified the need to better communicate both what's going on with that project and what's being observed in the field. And so the, I think uh, later today the, the citrus agents are going to have a conversation about the role that they can play in working with you to uh, do the early uh, detection work on those observations that you find, communicate those to Dr. Gmitter and his program so that we can really move that along and make sure that we're looking at all those opportunities that are presenting themselves in the field. And then finally, I just wanted to uh, again show a, a little bit about ultimately our goal for management and uh, some of you have seen this before. But solutions to HLB will require reducing psyllid populations, looking at the bacterial inoculum, and we talked today about antimicrobials in some de detail, and ultimately tree susceptibility, whether it's through these tolerant rootstocks or ultimately the uh, resistant trees that are, that are the result of the breeding program. So in, in combination, I would just encourage you to listen to these talks today, use all the tools that are available, Consider that we've got, to, we've got to attack all three of these areas to be successful in working with HLB. And uh, as the tools continue to be developed and deliver, incrementally you're gonna have a better opportunity to manage this disease. 
And I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today, and I'll be around all day. I'd be happy to visit with you individually. Thank you.